Hello people, welcome to the first installment of the 10 years later series. Today we have the ATI HD 5750 graphics card. This card was released in 2009, in October more precisely, and now it's had these glory days. Back in the day, the last gen flagship was the HD 4870 from ATI and of course the well-known GTX 280 which was an absolute beast and is still a decent choice for a very low-end gaming PC. That year NH were known for rapid increases in technology as much as GPUs and CPUs in fact. Shown by the 5770 which is the almost exact spec as the last year's flagship mentioned before with only the drawback being the lower bus. The HD 4870 had the 256 bit bus and the New York 5770 only on 128 bit one. But we aren't talking about the 5770 now, are we? The younger brother of this card is the 5750. The card actually placed in the same position as the 5700 XT, good, but just barely under the RTX 2070 as the, uh, or the year of GTX 260. If overclocked, this car can actually be kind of competitive uh, with the most cards uh, back in the day, only sporting a very weak heatsink though uh, with an 80mm fan, but we will deal with that later. The card is really small actually in comparison to my RX 580, and it's mostly because the latter has a huge heatsink in comparison. That passed up nicely in the power aspect of the GPU. At a measly 86 watts, this was considered by reviewers as being the best HDPC card money can buy. The idle power was very low, uh, that being a great plus over the last gen cards with more than 100 watts idle usage. Amazing, right? We have to start obviously with the specs. This board uh, features the Juniper LE GPU and the ter uh, with the Terascale ar architecture as well as being built on the Fortran animated process, taking in consideration that now, 10 years later, we only got the 7 atom user node, this is actually not bad. That goes as much to prove again that Moore's law is going to stop or end soon, uh, but new technology marvels are on the horizon, so the future really isn't looking that bad. Getting sidetracked though. The die is really small to compare to the most recent ones as the RTX 2080 Ti or the GTX 980 and it contains a whopping 1.4 million transistors. Uh, with the GPU clock of around 700 MHz, they can definitely shred any game from 2009. The amazing PCIe X16 Gen 2 interface is going to be blazing fast. No, seriously now, the interface is far from bottlenecking the GPU's performance. A uh, modern one, this is just not enough data that a game can throw at it at 16 gigabytes per second interface cannot handle. The ports on the back are really interesting. We have HDMI 1.4, can do 1080p 60Hz, but we have recommended resolution 1600 by 900, so I guess it makes sense. Alongside the HDMI, we have two DVI I, which is both digital and analog ports, and really cool in 2009, a display port. So how does it game? Let's get into the benchmarks.
So as you can see, the card is not impressing anyone, but you can still play a couple of titles at a good frame rate. Especially, as you can see, at very low settings in 720p. But for a 20 bucks worth of card, there is not much you can ask for. So in conclusion, how does the HD 5750 hold up in 2019? Do I recommend it to buy it now? No, but it's surely a piece of history and a decent retro gaming card. That was all for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of 10 years later, see you then.